Once upon a time within the Care Collab initiative, the year was 2021, and my dendrobium of film looked like this. And since that video, I have maintained its care as per what I mentioned back then. I have that video linked in the description. Well, here we are in 2023, and look at it now. Ta-da! I have some buds and each cane is already starting on a new growth so I have high hopes that this year will be the year for some more substantial growth in the lengths of the new canes. <laughs> Just kidding! <laughs> If you've been with my channel from the start, you will know that these are my class of 2020 keikis. I just could not resist a little bit of fun to give you an update on how these are doing. Seeing as my video is an update on all my ongoing film shenanigans on the patio. As you can see, these keikis were mounted on an inorganic version of a mount, which is in actual fact a combination of a placemat for a sandwich Tupperware and hob filter material for an extractor fan to allow for water retention and maintaining humidity in my super dry climate here in southern Spain. The mount is doing its job, but these keikis are really slow coming out of the gate because I have a parallel mount going on at the moment, which I call my monster mount. And the keikis on this mount are from the class of 2021 and 2022. The material is the same extractor fan filter within a burrito-like wrap of a PVC netting that could serve as a barrier for some crop plants in a vegetable garden. It is flexible and UV resistant, making it easy to pin together, keeping the filter material well contained, allowing gravity to pull the water down to the lowest point of the mount, where humidity will remain high, seeing as I'm banking on many roots to start growing on the lower keikis and grow into the material right out of the gate. But you see how long the canes from 2022 are that grew and developed on that mount, in comparison to the short canes on the 2020 mount. Me thinks that there is a need for more filter material on the small mount in order to accommodate the demand for more moisture during the active growth of the new canes. However, my little mount is firmly attached to the iron grate, so I'm going to have to come up with something that will not compromise the existing root system too much, while still adding more filter, or just change the mount altogether. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see what I come up with. Because, look at the mother plant. The four class of 2020 keikis on the little mount were the test keikis for the prototype of inorganic mounts I was trying to get to work back in 2020 because I stuck all their other classmates on the top of the mother plant's mount and check out the extent of their growth in comparison. All the mounts are getting the same amount of water several times a day now that it is windy and temperatures are warming up. My humidity is at 25% during this time so you can imagine the amount of misting I'm doing just with these three mounts alone. I can rely on the filter on the monster mount to hold on to water, so I do skip that one sometimes, only watering it heavily early in the morning and then a light misting for the topmost keikis to not frazzle out on me because of the dry wind, but the other two is mist, mist, mist. Since the mother plant was mounted on this piece of cork bark, the sphagnum moss I used back in the day has deteriorated and there is no buffer for any moisture to linger on the mount. Bringing me back to my small mount. They don't have that buffer either, but their classmates on the cork bark have already grown acceptable length canes under similar conditions. Anywho, all that just to point out while there's nothing wrong with either mount version, one is performing better than the other. Remember that the baked bark does not hold water, so it's not as if that is the reason for better growth on that mount. Having seen how the inorganic mounts are performing, the experiment worked to some degree. Now it needs tweaking if I'm going to continue with the setup. But let's get to the pièce de résistance, the mother plant. I cannot describe in adequate words just how much I love this orchid, just how much it has taught me about the behavior of roots while an orchid is resting. I have made several videos about the behavior, all of which I will link in the description. One of the main ones is in the orchid lingo playlist called Velayman. Meanwhile, also in the description, you will find all the other participating channels in this care collab 
and their corresponding links to their videos and how they care for their film or respectively an update on their orchid. So I encourage you to check out the description in case your climate does not quite match mine. And alternative care with some updates can provide you with more intel on how different climates and care have resulted in the progress of a films all over the tubes. And as you go to the description, you will see all the fun things you can do with a video. One of which is liking it. Something I so appreciate if you could do that. You can also share the video, which helps tremendously to get the channel to another audience. And if you are new to my channel, there's also that subscribe feature. It's a hat trick of YouTube goodies that you can do for the video and channel. And any action you take, know that I so appreciate it. Thank you so much. Anywho, the mother plant. A dream come true when in bloom. And look at what we are in store for in the coming days of 2023. Oh my goodness. I am showing you footage of the 22 blooming. And I kid you not. When this orchid is in bloom, I sit underneath her to enjoy the spectacle as often as possible because this incredible show only has a lifetime of two weeks of perfection, extending to three weeks, but that is really pushing it because the blooms will fade very quickly and drop, leaving the orchid and the grower to focus on the new growths of the year, just so that the magic will repeat itself the following year. I have as yet to grow an orchid that has me so blown away by the beauty of a bloom show as the Aphilum does. Meanwhile, space is limited on my patio, but not a single cakey goes to waste, hence the Monster Mount project. The progression of the spikes is painfully slow in comparison to the longevity of the blooms. The first cracking of the canes at the nodes is something I look for every year just so that I do not miss the moment and I have hopefully managed to capture the sequence in images. It is an exciting time of year for me with this orchid because the winters are so challenging and when the first cracks on the nodes appear, it is a visual energy booster that things are going to warm up soon. So as documented from the first cracks to where we are today, the waiting game is a total of eight weeks to then enjoy blooms for two weeks. <laughs> we are crazy. We have to be. Growing an orchid for 11 and a half months to have our breath taken away for two weeks there really is not something quite right and I understand why some people are under the impression that we are nuts and we get asked the question as in what's the point <laughs> and then even going to the extent of separating canes from each other to avoid abrasions that could pop off the spikes when the wind blows them putting a chair to combat any strong wind gusts of bashing the gate against something and cracking a cane tying the gate off to accommodate the wind gust from the opposite direction <laughs> you can see I have protected my affair because I want this bloom show. <laughs> it's because every single bloom is precious. <laughs> and well, that is the point for me. <laughs> I so look forward to sharing the full bloom spectacle of 2023 with you in a very short while. Because while my buds are so, so close to opening, we are not there yet. Oh, but it's not long to go now and it would be awesome if you were here to enjoy together with me what this orchid is about to do. Even though a little detail is explained in my Care Collab video, the original one, where I touch upon everything on how I care for this orchid, the orchid is facing east. So that is us with the camera. The orchid gets full sun in the mornings. Depending on the angle of the sun, during the winter, a little bit longer. But during the summer, when the sun is high in the sky, there is still full morning sun blasting this orchid until the sun goes over the portico. To the left of the screen is south facing. That's why you can see some of the canes are reaching and growing over to that area. Behind the gate is west. So when the orchid is in active growth, I'm getting the east growth and the south growth, seeing as that is the most influence of light that this orchid is getting. In case you're wondering as to why my canes are curving the way they are. I have not counted how many buds I have in total, but my longest cane has 51 on them. It is 80 centimeters long as well. And with all that anticipation, if that isn't enough already, <laughs> some of the canes are already starting on new growths. So it's go, 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 grow, grow, grow with this orchid. <laughs> 
From what I could discern, I've lost five buds. Probably too windy or something. They just didn't progress accordingly. Now, with all this anticipation, I'm already looking ahead because meanwhile, <laughs> I'm also monitoring the cakey zone for the class of 2023. Every node at the end of the canes where there are no blooms, Dendrobium of Phylum reserves for cakey production. After the orchid has finished blooming, I start to mist those areas with seaweed to begin with just to hopefully get some hormone encouragement into that area and then when the nodes start to crack where cakeys will form i add calmag to the seaweed in order to encourage healthy strong cakeys to grow with lots of roots it is paramount in my dry and windy climate that i keep misting once root nubbins appear so as not to lose them prematurely before the cakeys are big enough for me to be able to harvest them and then add them to the monster mount above so this is the status quo of my Ophilum to date. Didn't get it to bloom in time for the care collab. I'm sure there are some blooms in other videos. So I encourage you once again to check out the description and find the blooms of a Dendrobium Ophilum. But remember to subscribe just so that you don't miss out when the bloom spectacle begins here on the patio, as well as the start progression and harvesting of the class of 2023 cakey videos that will come in the future. And for everyone who has followed the journey of my Ophilum from Jump, thank you so, so much for your support. And also thank you for coming and looking at some bare canes with me, even though loaded with buds. I appreciate that you're here if you've made it this far. And if you have any questions that are not answered in my original Care Collab video about the care of my film, please ask away. The comments are there for a reason. And on that note, I wish you a wonderful day on that one condition though. Please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.